Thank you, Judy, for uh, inviting me to talk with all of you about a topic that's uh, incredibly meaningful to me. I'm Jeremy Hamburg, uh, the founder of My Best Social Life, where I am a dating and friendship coach for autistic adults. And this evening, Judy invited me to talk about the five steps to making friends and finding love with autism. Uh, and kudos to anyone who caught that. I tweaked a couple of words in the title after, after Judy sent out her, uh, her email blast to everybody. Before we jump in, oops, yep. Uh, before we jump in too far, uh, I wanna say a few words about how I'm going to phrase things because Judy asked me to address uh, both autism parents and autistic adults here this evening. Um, the former trial lawyer in me loves talking to different types of people with different perspectives, um, but the public speaker in me knows that phrasing and language gets challenging when you're talking to both autistic adults and autism parents. So you'll notice that uh, the language I'm using talks directly to people on the spectrum. But for our parents here this evening, you absolutely belong here. Uh, because everything uh, that we talk about here, uh, these steps that we're talking about, um, you can help your son or daughter um, take them so that they can make great friends and start dating successfully and find lasting love. Uh, so with that note about phraseology out of the way, um, what we're going to cover in the next 45 minutes is an important how-to list for having a social life that will make you truly happy. So we're going to cover how to use your hobbies and interests to find people who are compatible with you, how to stop getting tongue-tied and having your mind go blank because it's so frustrating when you power through your fears and anxieties and you actually start a conversation, but then it goes badly. We're also gonna cover um, how to dive deeper in conversations so you can build real connections and a genuine bond with wonderful people. Um, because that feeling of connection is what's going to allow you to bring the right people into your life. And we're going to talk about how you can use your unique autistic traits to build your confidence and reduce your self-doubt, because you have so much light and love to give the world, and we want to empower you to share your gifts with the world. So in short, this is all about how to be the most calm, confident, and courageous version of yourself without writing an online profile, without sending a thousand messages to random strangers, and, and maybe most importantly, without acting fake. So before we go too much further, uh, let me take a moment to introduce myself and share with you a bit about my own journey. Uh, I am an autism dating and friendship coach. And if you had asked me 15 years ago, if that would be my profession, uh, I probably would have given you a strange look uh, because my career back then was as a lawyer. I spent seven years as counsel for J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and seven years before that as a prosecutor in New York City. And it was around the time that I was finishing law school that I started a social group for young adults in Manhattan uh, because, and not Manhattan Beach, Manhattan, New York. Um, because I wanted to have a place where young professionals could network. But it became clear that the 200 or so people that would come to each of our events were all single and, and all looking to find love. And it wasn't long before two of our members, uh, my friends Abby and Karen, asked me to teach them how to walk into our events with confidence and walk out with a date. So I spent the next three years learning the science of attraction, everything from psychology to neurology to evolutionary biology. And I combined that with the skills I honed as a prosecutor. Because after all, when you think about a courtroom lawyer, you think about someone who projects confidence, who asks good questions, who tells good stories, who's a good listener, right? Well, those also happen to be four of the most important skills for dating and making friends, according to science. So I combined everything I knew and everything I learned, and I went to a friend of mine who worked at the Manhattan Jewish Community Center, and I said, hey, Shoshana, let me do a workshop about how to be successful at dating. And she said, fine, Jeremy, as long as I don't have to pay you. And I said, it's a deal. Um, so I ran my workshop, and it was so popular 
and, and, and frankly, so innovative that the Manhattan JCC invited me back five or six times. But what I didn't know was that the Manhattan JCC was also home to three special needs organizations at the time. And their members were coming to my dating workshops. And so the three special needs organizations heard about me and they invited me to do workshops especially for them. And I did. Uh, and one of them, the well-known adaptations program at the Silver Center for Special Needs, um, invited me to stay and be their in-house friendship and dating coach, which I did. Um, and over the course of three years, I taught a variety of workshops and courses about dating and building friendships um, at adaptations that were tailored specifically to people with autism and other neurodiverse disabilities. Um, a big point of pride is that a groundbreaking film actually came of it. Um, before anyone was talking about Love on the Spectrum, everyone was talking about the award-winning movie called Keep the Change. Uh, if you haven't seen Keep the Change, it features autistic actors, David Polanski and Samantha Elisifan, and it's a fictional story about them meeting at an autism support group and starting a romantic relationship. Well, David and Samantha were students in my dating workshops, and the director of the movie, Rachel Israel, screened the film for the first time ever um, in our group. And, you know, I think a big reason why the film received so much critical acclaim was because it felt like a novelty to watch autistic people dating and finding love. And I felt equally strongly that it shouldn't be a novelty. So I spent the last 12 plus years cracking the code to social success and ending loneliness for people with autism. And the way I do it is with an approach that doesn't exist anywhere else. It's an intensive and a wraparound approach because I strongly believe that you really need to focus on building a social life to actually be successful at it. Oh, well, I've never seen one before. Oh. Okay, there we go. So everything uh, starts with a strategy session. Uh, I get together with any autism family that wants one and we spend 90 minutes or so talking about what's keeping them stuck and you know what their young adult wants their social life to be. And then uh, I share a step-by-step -step roadmap for making it real. Um, and the strategy session is always free of charge because I want all families to have hope that a better life is possible. And I want them to see that there's a real roadmap for making it happen. And for the young adults who are you know, truly committed to starting friendships and building relationships, I offer a program called Social Life 360 which is absolutely life-changing for the families that join. Um, the moment that a family joins the program, their young adult just gets bombarded with welcome messages from our other clients and their parents get welcomed by the other moms and dads in our community too. And then we get to work. Uh, my clients spend uh, 12 weeks learning our social strategy and bringing it into the real world. Uh, and it boosts their confidence and reduces their self-doubt. And together we build this incredible plan to step by step for where to go to meet new people and how to approach them and how to have a, a great conversation with them and then how to turn those conversations into hangouts and even dates. Um, but my favorite part of our program by far uh, are Wednesday evenings when I get together with all of my clients and all of their parents on a Zoom call and all we do is celebrate their victories big and small together. And the energy is incredible and it's so uplifting. Um, and last night we were supposed to have uh, New York Times journalist, journalist Judith Newman, uh, the author of To Siri With Love, but she had vertigo and, uh, and couldn't get out of bed. So that was a little bit of a bummer. But all of these things together are life changing because my clients and their parents feel like they finally have a successful social strategy, along with this incredible feeling of supporting community. And all of that inspires them to venture out into the real world without being dragged down by constant loneliness and self-doubt. So that's me. And I am proud of the incredible impact um, that my co-coach Alana and I get to have on, on the lives of people with autism and their families. And so my promise to you is that by the end of this discussion, you'll have a, a simple and effective five-step roadmap that will empower you to meet more people with more confidence and do it more successfully than you ever thought possible. These five steps that we're discussing are 
the fastest way to get from where you are now to the friendships and the relationships that you deserve to have. But for, you know, most of you right now, I suspect that that you're here tonight because socializing is a struggle. Um, for many of you, the reason why is because meeting new people, bringing them into your life and keeping them there can feel overwhelming. It can feel like each part of the social process is its own riddle that you need to solve. For many of you, you're, you're puzzled by where to go to find people you'll enjoy. Most people on the spectrum don't wanna to go to bars or clubs. Maybe you're nervous about going to a new place and seeing new faces. Maybe you're anxious about walking up to someone you've never met before. And a big part of the reason for that might be that you're afraid of being judged and then rejected again for the millionth time. And maybe you're even a little bit jealous that other people are, are chatting and connecting and having fun, but you're not. And there's no worse feeling than watching other people enjoy themselves while you're just struggling. And, and worse, maybe you're frustrated that you don't have any idea what's going wrong. For many of you, you may have already gotten to the point where you aren't motivated to try anymore because socializing just feels like a chore to you. And, and as Dr. Dave Claudel uh, told my clients when he spoke to our community, you're just tired of struggling to poorly imitate what other people do so easily. So as I said, you know, when you think about building your social life, it can feel like there's an endless series of riddles that separate you from the friends you want to have and the girlfriend or boyfriend you want to meet. And maybe the most important fact of all, something that I hear from adults with autism every single day, is that you feel like you've tried everything. And everything has failed. There we go. The years of struggle are, are real, but it, it isn't anyone's fault and, and certainly not yours. Um, until recently, nobody had any real idea how to help with someone, you know, how to help someone with autism build a social life. Um, but I spent the last dozen plus years changing that and uh, I've cracked the code. And that's why the five steps we are talking about today are so important. So, you know, know this, the five steps that we're going to talk about can change the entire trajectory of your life because the five steps help you deal with the nervousness and the anxiety that are keeping you stuck. And the way the five steps do that is by giving you more control over who you're bringing into your life, how you're building a deep connection with them, the confidence that you feel when you're doing it. And it'll become pretty clear to you why everything that you've tried before didn't work. But when you take the five steps, you'll be able to land exciting dates and make great friends and have deeper relationships by being, as I said before, the most cool, confident, and courageous version of yourself. In a very real way, this is a roadmap to social success by people with autism for people with autism. And I say that because I've been a dating and friendship coach in the autism community for almost 13 years now. And what happened was that over time, I started to realize that there was a huge difference where a small group of adults with autism were living exciting social lives and they were dating and some were even getting married, but most other people on the spectrum just continued to struggle, right? Sinking deeper and deeper into loneliness and, and frustration. So I began learning from that small group of successful autistic people and seeing what they were doing and then I compared that to what all the other lonely people were doing. And here's what I found. It became clear to me that there were five things that socially successful people on the spectrum were doing that everyone else wasn't. I started calling them the five steps and I began building those five steps into the strategy that I gave my clients. And what happened to them was, was truly nothing short of amazing. My clients started making friends faster and going on dates and finding love. Some of my clients even got engaged and married. And so, you know, I have immense gratitude to you, Judy, you know, for inviting me to share the steps 
with you and with this community because I am passionate about ending loneliness in the autism community. I think about it from the minute I get up to the minute I go to bed. And I wanna see you know, all of you and all of your sons and daughters live their best lives. So let's get started with the first step. The first step is to picture your storybook ending, uh, which is a fancy way of saying that it's important to understand what you want your social life to look like and who you want to be in it. I live about 20 minutes from Disneyland now, and many of you do also, so let's use an amusement park analogy. Um, imagine for a moment that you're standing at the entrance to your favorite amusement park, Disneyland, Nasberry Farms, Legoland, whichever. And what I want you to do though, is imagine that as you're standing at the park entrance, a nice family walks into the amusement park. And that family stops a few feet from where you're standing. And you overhear the parents ask, what ride do you want to go on first? And the child says, a fun one. Well, the parents now have a problem, right? Their child has a genuine desire to go on a fun ride in the amusement park. But the child's answer is not very helpful because every ride in the amusement park is a fun ride. So the parents have no idea where to start because they have no way to narrow down the options, which is a very good analogy for what I see in the autism community every day. Every day I do three to four strategy sessions with autistic young adults, very much like you, very much like your sons and daughters. Um, and I ask the same question every time. What do you want your new friends and your new relationship to be like? Well, years ago, when I first started asking that question, I thought, that your peers would be giving me very long answers. I thought that people would have this well thought out vision of what they wanted their life to be, you know, right down to what they wanted their girlfriend and boyfriend to look like and to dress like and what they wore and, you know, what TV shows they watched. But, but I was completely wrong, okay? I literally could not have been more wrong. When I asked people during our strategy session what they want, many people have no answer at all. They just don't know. They just don't know what they want. And for the ones who do, their answers are usually really short. Things like, I want someone nice. I want someone who will appreciate me. I want someone to do things with me. Obviously, those are real desires, but they're not at all specific. So here's the problem. That lack of clarity and specificity about who they want in their life makes it nearly impossible to start searching for someone good someone compatible. Does that, does that make sense? Going back to, you know, our amusement park analogy, knowing only that you want someone nice, someone who will appreciate you, who will do things with you, is basically the equivalent of someone walking to an amusement park knowing only that they want to go on a fine, fun ride. The desire is real, but it doesn't help you narrow down your options or decide what you need to do next. And so why is that bad? Because here's what I found to be true. You can never achieve a goal without having a clear vision of what that goal is. Clarity gives you direction. Clarity about your goal is what allows us to reverse engineer a strategy for achieving it. That's why you should know exactly what you want your life to be and who you want in it because then we can figure out exactly what we need to do to make it happen. And that's true for, for everything in life. If you want to win the Super Bowl again, you need, you need a plan for how to score more points than you give up. It's the same for passing an exam or landing a job. Uh, even baking chocolate chip cookies, you need a plan, right? You need to buy the right ingredients, flour, butter, sugar, eggs, chocolate chips. You need to, to mix them in the right order. And if you mess any of that up, then you don't get chocolate chip cookies. You have a mess. Uh, and, and the same is true for making friends and finding someone special. That's why if you want to bring new friends into your life and you want to attract a girlfriend or boyfriend, then you must have a clear and specific vision of who those people are. And the way that you do that is by having a detailed picture of what your life looks like with these new people in it. And that's why I call the step picture in your storybook ending. It's like a movie in your mind where you're the main character and the rest 
rest of the cast are people that you want in your life. So my suggestion to you is this. Start creating this movie in your mind. Start picturing who's in the movie with me. What are the things that we're doing together? Where are we going together? What are the memories that we're making together? And I think this one's important. How do I feel doing it? The more vivid the movie that you make in your mind, the easier it is for us to reverse engineer a plan to make it a reality. Now, will life happen exactly like the movie in your mind? Of course not, right? Life is not a fairy tale and none of us will marry into royalty. Um, but what I have found to be true is that when my clients shoot for the stars, even if they miss, they still hit the moon. And the same will be true for you. When you set big goals, even if you fall a little short, you'll still accomplish a lot. And that's why this step is so important. Once you can picture what you want your life to be, then we can create a strategy to really make it happen. So that's the first step. So here's where the action begins. Um, the second step is to find your tribe. And that's a fancy way of saying that you should spend your time where the right people are getting together. When I do strategy sessions, there's one question I always ask, no matter what. I always ask, what isn't working in your social life? And almost all of your peers share with me the same problem. They say, I don't know where to go to find good people. Well, I mean, that's a big problem when you're trying to have a social life, right? When you don't know where to go to find the right people, what ends up happening is that you mostly hang out with your parents and your family. And when you're not with them, you spend a lot of time in your room, which usually means that you play a lot of video games or you spend a lot of time staring at your phone, consuming way too much TikTok and YouTube videos and scrolling Instagram. And when you're doing that, it, it means that you're not in the places where your future friends and your future partner are hanging out, which means that you're giving yourself no chance at a happier life. I hope hopefully that makes sense. I had a, an interesting conversation very recently um, with a young man, and, and he said to me, Jeremy, my high school friends keep canceling on me. Are they just making excuses for why they, they don't want to see me? And I asked him, how many times have your high school friends canceled on you? And he said, five straight times. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I told him, which is those high school people aren't his friends anymore. Because here's what science says. Research shows that there are three essential qualities to a true friendship. They share at least one of your interests or hobbies, whether that's art or anime or hiking or biking or punk rock or even video games, right? Friends share at least one common interest. They also accept you for who you are and they allow you to be your authentic self. They don't think that you're broken and they love you for who you are. And three, they're committed to building and nurturing the relationship with you which means that they are there for you when times are good and when times are tough. And when they make plans with you, they keep those plans. And this is so important because you want to bring people into your life who have all three of these qualities. If any of those three qualities is missing, then all you have is an acquaintance. And acquaintances aren't what we're after here, right? Because acquaintances don't make you feel complete. So step two of the strategy is to spend time in the places where the right people are spending theirs. Which always leads to the question, is the internet a good place to meet people? All right, so we're gonna talk about the internet and is the internet a good place to meet people? And I used to, I used to think so. It seemed so logical to me at the time that the internet would be the solution to loneliness for the autism community because there are like 5 billion people on the internet, right? And that seemed like a good thing. 
Um, and you don't need to make eye contact on the internet. Um, and that seemed like a good thing. And there's no body language when you're chatting on the internet. And that seemed like a good thing. And you have time to think about what you're writing, um, which is something that you don't have when you're talking with someone face to face. So for all of those reasons, I was in the very large crowd of people who thought the internet was exactly what the autism community needed to solve the loneliness problem. Um, and now I'm part of the very large crowd of people who are very disappointed uh, because in reality, the internet has actually made loneliness worse for many people. Many of you have wasted countless hours sending messages to people on dating sites only to get ignored or ghosted, or maybe you messaged with some people through a gaming portal or a social media app, but you've always logged off feeling like there's something missing. Because there, there is. The people on the internet are just distant electronic acquaintances. And even worse, they might be out to defraud you or exploit you. You know, as someone who spent seven years as a criminal prosecutor in New York City, I can tell you that one of the biggest factors in a love scam is loneliness. Lonely people want to believe that the attention they're getting is real, which is why they fall prey to fraudsters at an alarming, alarming rate. And the internet is, is just a really easy place for fraudsters to find lonely people to victimize. Scams aside, autistic people have shared with me that trying to find dates and friendship online is actually twice as hard as it is in real life. And there are two reasons for that. Number one, the internet is full of hidden rules, right? There are hidden rules for how to write an online profile and what photos to pick. There are hidden rules for who to message and who not to message. There are hidden rules for what to write and how often to write. There are even hidden rules for when to suggest a phone call and then a date. So the hidden rules are, are the first problem. The second problem is this. Even if you master all of the hidden rules of the internet, you still need the in-person social skills to win someone over in real life. That's why the internet makes meeting people twice as hard because it doubles the number of skills that you need to master. And you know who wants double the work? So here's the bottom line. The most socially successful people on the spectrum don't waste time looking in the wrong places. They're not looking in bars, they're not hanging out at clubs, and they aren't spending all of their time alone in their room surfing the internet. They focus on finding their tribe, they focus on spending time in the places where the right people are gathering. And so my suggestion to you is this, do the same. Find the places where people are doing things that you find fun and exciting, where people share your morals and ethics and values, where people are around your age and where they are inclusive and welcoming. Because what's become crystal clear to me over the last 12 or 13 years as a coach is that when you spend time in the wrong places, you get nervous, you get anxious, right? Nothing good happens. But when you find your tribe, then you can have fun then you can feel relaxed. And, and that's what allows you to be your best self. And that's the version of you that people wanna meet. So that's the second step, finding your tribe. Let's talk about the third step to being successful, not just in your social life, but in all aspects of your life, at school, job interviews, with your coworkers, right? Family gatherings, okay? And that is, building your mental library of questions and stories. And what that means is being prepared ahead of time for what you're gonna tell people and what you're gonna ask people to have a seamless conversation that creates a spark and a connection. And that's so important because once you know who you want in your life and where to go to find them, then you need to know how to win them over. So that's the third step. And what most people on the spectrum tell me is that winning people over has been a lifelong battle for them. The problem of winning people over is something that comes up in literally hundreds of strategy sessions. And the root cause of that problem is the same almost every time, right? Most people on the spectrum don't know what they'll say or what they'll ask or what they'll do in a conversation. So the conversation goes badly. 
it isn't your fault and it, it isn't your parents' fault. And it isn't even the fault of autism experts because as I said before, until recently, nobody had a clue how to help autistic young adults build a genuine social life. But the way you were taught to go into social situations, just it, it just isn't effective, right? How many times have you heard, just be yourself, say hi, introduce yourself, just start talking to people. I actually had a dad tell that to his son on a strategy session earlier this afternoon, right? Just, just go to the gym and the casino and start talking to people. It, it sounds like good advice and, and it's meant well, but in reality, that's a recipe for failure because it isn't how socially successful adults meet each other. They don't walk up to each other and say, hi, I'm Jeremy, what's your name? Um, but also the advice, you know, introduce yourself and just start talking is really abstract. It makes a big assumption that you'd know how to carry on a conversation after you introduced yourself, which is something that, you know, many people on the spectrum struggle mightily with. So in reality, what's happening is that you're going out into the social world without a social plan. And as my mentor always says, when you fail to have a plan, then you are planning to fail. I'd be willing to bet that every person here tonight watching this can look at his or her own life and appreciate the truth of that statement. If you fail to have a plan, then you are planning to fail. But that's what's happening when most autistic people go out into the social world. They're walking up to someone and saying, hi, I'm Jeremy, what's your name? But that's, that's not a plan. It creates really awkward situations because it isn't how adults meet each other. And again, not your fault and not your parents' fault either. But, you know, nobody had a better way. So that's what people on the spectrum were being told to do. And you know very well what happens next, right? You get nervous and anxious. So maybe you start tripping over your words and you get tongue-tied because your mind is racing. And sometimes your mind goes blank entirely. And you have these long, awkward pauses. So the conversation has no flow and it, and it just feels uncomfortable. And in the end, you give up or they walk away, right? You try your hardest, but you don't make a connection and you don't create that spark and you come home alone. Again, no new friend, no phone number, no date and nothing to show for your effort of going out there into the social world, except more frustration. Frustration is a terrible, terrible feeling. People like to win. And a big part of winning is having a genuine conversation with someone special in a way that builds a real connection between the two of you. And you are absolutely capable of it. In fact, when you have a mental library and some basic social tools, you may be even better at having conversations than most neurotypicals. And the reason why is because conversations usually follow a pattern and people with autism tend to be very good with patterns. So instead of thinking about conversations as a you know, mystical creature understood you know, only by neurotypicals, um, try instead to look at a conversation as a combination of just four elements. You know, element one, the questions people ask to keep the conversation flowing. Element two, the answers people give to those questions. Element three, the stories people tell to make the conversation interesting and entertaining. And element four, the, the next steps that they decide on, like when they're going to call each other um, or when they're going to, you know, get together to hang out. Um, that's really it. Almost every conversation is just those four elements mixed and matched in some way. Um, and once you start thinking of conversations that way, you'll start noticing patterns in the way the elements are combined, which is exactly what socially successful people with autism do. They realize that conversations follow a pattern and so they're prepared for it. And the way they prepare for it is by building a mental library for each of the four elements of the conversation. They have, what I call an effective conversation starter. You might call it a pickup line or an opener. I think that the Brits call it a chat up line. Um, 
they prepared uh, deep questions that provoke thought because autistic people hate small talk. Um, they prepared interesting answers that build intrigue um, because short answers to questions are the fast way to kill a conversation. And lastly, they prepared stories about their life, the things that they've done, the places that they've gone, the obstacles they've overcome, the things they've accomplished because people love hearing stories and people love people who tell stories. So my suggestion is that you do the same thing. Build your mental library and you're gonna love what happens because when you have a mental library of things to talk about, your mind won't go blank and your tongue won't get tied and conversations will start flowing seamlessly. And that's magnetic. And that's when your winning really begins. Winning feels amazing. Helping, helping people win feels amazing. Um, and that's why I always look forward to Wednesday evenings because as I mentioned before, that's when all of my clients and all of their families get together on Zoom and all we do is celebrate their wins. Every client and every parent shares his or her victories for the week and it's incredibly powerful and, and uplifting. Um, but it's also really enlightening too um, because I learn from my clients' wins. And one lesson that my you know, clients' wins have taught me over and over again is that finding your strengths and using those strengths is the fast track to victory. So the fourth step is finding your autism superpower. There are far, far too many people in the world who look at autism and all they see is obstacles. Um, but, you know, let me ask you this. What would the world look like if we stopped talking about curing autism? What would the world look like if we stopped seeing autism only as a barrier? What would the world be like if we started talking instead about the advantages that autism can bring and the superpowers it can give you? The way I see it, for far, far too long, the world has thought about autism the wrong way. People saying, it's a disease. You need to hide who you truly are. You need to apologize for how your brain works. You need to mask your quirks. You need to act like everyone else acts. Those are the old ways of thinking about autism, and it's been devastating. The old ways of thinking about autism have been downright destructive to people in the autism community and maybe even to you and your family. The old ways of thinking make you feel like you are a problem that needs to be cured. You feel like you're broken. You feel defective, invisible. You feel like you don't belong. You feel small and insignificant. You feel incapable of the social life that you want and deserve. And so it's time to throw away those old ways of thinking about autism because the old ways of thinking are, are just plain wrong. What we need to do is redouble our efforts to enlighten our communities that autistic isn't lesser. It's just different, right? But differences can be strengths and differences can be superpowers because that's the truth. But the harsh reality is that, you know, those superpowers aren't always easy to see. So we also need to redouble our efforts to find your superpowers amidst the challenges. There are so, so many autistic traits and qualities and quirks that people on the spectrum can turn to their advantage. I mean, think about all the incredible light and love that you can bring to people in this world with your honesty with your integrity, with your loyalty, with your commitment, with your creativity, your inclusiveness, your tenacity, right? Those are all autism traits, aren't they? You have gifts to give people in this world, but too often those gifts are locked inside of you. So let's uncover those superpowers of yours because this world desperately, desperately needs your light and your love and your goodness. 
autism has come a long way, but there's still more that needs to be done. And we need to start by putting an end to the old ways of thinking about autism. We now know why some people on the spectrum are socially successful. We know their secrets. And I've turned those secrets into a strategy that is simple and very, very successful. It's a 21st century strategy that cracks the code for people on the spectrum, and it can change the entire trajectory of your life too. The strategy begins with knowing who you want in your life and what you want your relationships to be. That's step one, picturing your storybook ending. Then seek out those people by spending time in the right places. That's step two, finding your tribe. Then plan for the questions you want to ask and the stories you want to tell because a great conversation is the spark that creates connection. That's step three, building your mental library. And do all of that with more confidence and less fear and less anxiety because you found your autism superpowers. That's the fourth step. And so now let's talk about the fifth step, right? This is the one that separates autistic people whose lives change quickly from everyone else who just continues to struggle endlessly. What separates the winners from everyone else is the right mentor. Choosing the right mentor is without a doubt the single biggest difference between socially successful autistic people and everyone else who quits. It is the secret weapon of your peers who are living their best lives. And I'm gonna share with you something that I wish I had known years ago and it's this, everyone should have a mentor. The common denominator of every successful individual is a mentor who has helped them achieve their success. And I challenge you truly to think of anyone who has wanted anything and did it without a mentor or a coach. Nobody wins alone. There's no such thing. There's a great mentor or a great coach behind every great achievement. Michael Jordan, had Phil Jackson. Your Super Bowl champion Rams had Sean McVay. Bill Gates had Warren Buffett. Gordon Ramsay had Joel Robuchon. Oprah Winfrey had Jeffrey Jacobs. Albert Einstein had Max Talmud. The Beatles had George Martin. Luke Skywalker had Yoda. I have five mentors of my own, not even including my parents. Um, everyone, and I mean everyone, should have a mentor. The mentor is the difference between success and failure because the right mentor has the recipe that you need for success. A proven strategy, right? A strategy that other people just like you have used so you know it works. Um, combine that with accountability because humans have a tendency to procrastinate and slack off when nobody's looking, right? Um, but the right mentor is watching you and the right mentor is holding you accountable so that you keep making progress towards the life you want to live. And the right mentor is also giving you inspiration and motivation because winning is a process. And there are going to be moments along the way during that process when you doubt yourself. But the right mentor will be there for you by your side to boost you up and inspire you when you need it most. And then there's troubleshooting. And this is really important because regardless of how much progress you have made, there is going to be a time when things go wrong and you don't know why. And at that moment, when you've hit that bump in the road and you're getting frustrated, you have exactly three choices. Think about this. You can quit. That's what a lot of people do. They get frustrated and they give up. Or number two, you can waste months or even years trying to figure out the problem yourself. And when you can't figure it out, you quit too. Or number three, you can turn to your mentor who knows exactly what's going wrong and knows exactly how to fix the problem fast. The right mentor is going to reconnect you to your dream, remind you of your greatness, show you exactly what went wrong, show you exactly how to fix it, and get you back on the road to success quickly. I went to one of my client's weddings. Um, his name is Douglas, and I was actually in his wedding. I gave a blessing to him and his bride during the ceremony under the marital canopy. And he came up to me afterwards uh, at the wedding reception and he said something to me that I'll always remember. He said, when the odds are against you, you have to change the odds. And Douglas knew the odds. 
91% of autistic people spend their life alone. They grow old with nobody. That's not what Douglas wanted for himself, but everything else he tried had failed. Online dating, meetup groups, everything. So he needed to change the odds. And that's why he sought out a mentor. The right mentor changes the odds. And now he's married and he has a wonderful wife and they're happy together. And he has never looked back. That's what life can be. And the steps that Douglas took to make it a reality for him are the same steps that you can use to make it a reality for you too. And that's why we covered how to use your hobbies and passions to find people who excite you, how to stop getting tongue-tied and having your mind go blank when you're trying to have a conversation, how to go deeper in conversations so you can build a real connection, uh, how to find your superpower and find new levels of confidence, and ultimately how to be the most calm, confident, and courageous version of yourself. And we covered the exact steps for making that happen. Picture your story book ending, find your tribe, build your mental library, find your autism superpower, and choose the right mentor. That's the secret weapon to winning. I love serving the autism community because I love helping people win. That's why I left my career as a corporate lawyer. And I want to help you win too. So, you know, you have a choice. You know, one choice is you can take the information uh, and, and sort of work on it. Um, but I want to give you and your family another option. So I am offering to speak to you and your family uh, personally about how you can apply these steps in your social life starting, I don't know, tomorrow. And the reason why I'm offering to do that with you and your family is because Whatever's keeping you stuck, I've seen it. My co-coach Alana has seen it. Um, she's a New York City public school teacher with a specialization in uh, special ed. Um, and you know we help our clients overcome it. And I will get on the phone with you and your family and uh, Alana may join us as well. And we will do a strategy session together. We'll spend 60 to 90 minutes together and we're gonna dive deep into exactly what you want your friendships to be like, exactly what you want your relationships to be like, and exactly what's been keeping you stuck. Um, and most importantly, uh, Alana and I are gonna share with you a step-by-step -step plan for how to fix it. And so you and your family will leave our strategy session with a simple roadmap for meeting new people, making new friends, going on dates and turning them into a relationship. And then the first question everyone has is, well, how much does a strategy session cost? And the answer is simple. As I said before, we never charge for a strategy session. It is our gift to people on the spectrum and their families. And then of course, the natural next question is what's the catch? Uh, and there, there is no catch, but Alana and I know who we can help and we know who we can't. So um, you must have a deep desire to build new friendships and to have a relationship. Um, you must be a caring person who is excited to share your kindness with others because we only like, we only like helping good people. Um, and you must be willing to put in the effort. So, you know, if that's you, then I'm offering to have a strategy session with you and your family. And what I found over the years is that, you know, since we're going to be working on one of the most important goals in your life, um, we need the most important people in your life to participate. Um, that's why we do it as a family session. It's you and both of your parents, assuming that they're both active in your life. Um, because what Alan and I have found is that having all three of you on the call together, all three of your perspectives is crucial to making the progress that we want to make in 60 or 90 minutes. Um, you know, I, I, I like to say I was blessed with two incredible gifts and I want to share them with you. And one of them is my gift for seeing what you are truly capable of. And the other one is my gift for developing simple strategies that, that solve pretty complex problems. That's why my career is dedicated to helping adults with autism just like you build the relationships that they dream about. And one way that I do that is by sharing some of my insights at no cost with, with families. Um, plus, obviously, I know that you and your family might want to work with me and Alana. You might want to join the Social Life 360 program and become part of our family. 
So at the end of our strategy session, if you want to, we can explore whether working together is a good fit for all of us. So um, that's it. Uh, if you want to take the next step, um, we can schedule, schedule a strategy session and talk about how to build a social life. You can email me. My email address is on the screen, jeremy at mybestsociallife.com, and we'll find a time that worked for you and your family. Um, or if you're a parent, uh, you can go to mybestsociallife.com forward slash apply. Uh, and if you're single and on the spectrum, you can go to mybestsociallife.com forward slash free session. But either way, we will spend 90 minutes together um, getting you on a path to new friendships and great dates and a, and a loving partner who makes you feel truly amazing. So thank you again, Judy, for having me. Thank you for letting me be a part of this community. This is my favorite topic to talk about in the entire world. And so I'm going to turn it back over to you.